the theory and code for vision transformers in 15 minutes. This is a quick guide to give you all the details you need to know. At the end I also quickly talk about some differences between CNNs and vision transformers. Let's get started. Here you can see the transformer architecture, which you might or might not have seen. The vision transformer is simply an extension of the transformer for image data. It's important to note that we will only make use of the left part, which is the encoder. The right part, the decoder, is mainly used for sequential generative applications like generating text, such as in JetGPT. The vision transformer was presented by Google Research in the paper on the left called In Images Worth 16 by 16 Words. This was in 2020, so this video is a bit late to the party, but recently was the first time I actually used this model in practice and I thought I'd make a short summary video about it. I applied the vision transformer on a medical imaging dataset and wanted to compare it against CNNs. If you're familiar with the transformer, it's straightforward to understand the vision transformer. So let's have a look. Let's quickly zoom into the encoder part again. In the first step, the inputs are transformed into numeric vectors or embeddings. Embeddings are amazing because they let you project data into a vector space where similar data is embedded to similar vectors. Here's a nice example with images of traffic signs that show the alignment in the embedding space on the right. In the classical transformer, the inputs are specific tokens that are transformed to embeddings. Typically, these are words. How do we get these input embeddings for images? In the vision transformer, this is done using image patches. This can be understood as transforming an image into a sequence, because originally the transformer was designed for sequence tasks. Let's see this in action. Taking this image as an example, we first patch it into, for example, 16 by 16 pixel tiles. Then we pass each of the patches through the first component of the transformer encoder, which gives us embeddings. Each of the red bars here represents one of these vectors. So what is this block in the transformer encoder that generates these embeddings? In practice, it's simply a fully connected neural network. This means each of the color values is put into neurons and passed through some linear layers. The output is an embedding. Of course, we will implement the simple vision transformer from scratch to better understand all of the details. If you're in a hurry, don't worry, there are plenty of libraries that have implemented these models already. Before we, however, go ahead and implement this first part, let's quickly talk about how we can perform the patching efficiently. Our input image consists of three color channels, red, green and blue. We also have a specific width and height, plus potentially a batch dimension if we have more than one image. So how do we rearrange the image on the top into patches of a specific patch size on the bottom, which we will use as input for the transformer? To do this, most of the implementations make use of EINOPS, which stands for Einstein Operations. This is a package that lets you rearrange multidimensional arrays and tensors in various ways. The reshaping can be expressed through the following syntax. The different colors indicate the dimensions of our input tensor. In brackets you put multiplication of two integer values. You can actually see that my visualization is not on point because, for example, if the patch size is 16, you would reshape to 16 times 16 times 3, which equals a vector of size 768. But this was a bit difficult to visualize. This form of rearranging is what you need if you make use of a fully connected layer. If you use a conf layer, however, you can arrange it slightly different and keep the squared patches. Now let's go ahead and implement this first component. Okay, so this is the notebook and this is mainly based on these four blog posts regarding vision transformers. INOPS is usually not installed, so we will simply install it here. And then here is the data set. I defined a compose object, which simply transforms all images into the same size, and then after that transforms them to tensors. And the, the images look like this. The data set is this Oxford PET data set, and it consists of different pets and has 37 classes and we don't have too many data points. And now the patching, and this is mainly based on one of the implementations from above. 
For this we can define a PyTorch module called Patch Embedding, which does exactly this reshaping that I've just described. And after that it applies a linear transformation, which gives us these embedding vectors. And so here is an example, we take a sample data point from the data set, the original shape is 1, which is the batch dimension, 3 color channels and then 144 times 144. And this is, after applying the patch embedding, transformed into 324 patches and each of them have a dimension of 128, which is the embedding size. Now let's quickly talk about the CLS token. CLS stands for classification here. Typically at the end of a network you want to gather all of the information into one representation and use it for classification. As the transformer is a sequence to sequence model you will have several outputs at the end. So what's the best way to get a single global representation? This brings us to the concept of the CLS token. But what exactly is this token? As you can see on this overview, there are vectors that result from each of the patch images and there is one additional input, which is exactly this class token. You can see it as a dummy input that is later filled with information gathered from all other inputs. Initially it's filled with random values and then these values are adjusted so it's a learnable vector. Eventually it serves as a global feature extractor that represents the entire image and can be used for downstream tasks. To all of the input images, a positional embedding is added and this brings us to the next concept. Like in the traditional transformer, the vision transformer also makes use of position embeddings. The reason for this is that the attention in the transformer is position independent. Positional embeddings make the model understand where each patch is placed in the original image. Of course, we could just give the patches a number and add this information to the inputs. For NLP tasks, however, it turned out that using plain numbers is first of all not very efficient, as these numbers could become quite large. And secondly, that very large numbers might be rare in the training set, which makes it difficult to learn this positional information. Positional embeddings were presented in the attention paper and they have some nice properties. Instead of numbers, they are vectors. And what's nice is that the distance between inputs is consistent for different lengths. These vectors are constructed as a mix of sine and cosine functions, but I won't go into the details in this video. In the vision transformer, we have a fixed size number of patches and therefore don't need all of these advantages. Instead, we can simply learn positional vectors to have less inductive biases. One more note, positional embeddings are typically added on top of the input embedding vectors and not concatenated. In the implementation, the positional embedding is simply a learnable parameter vector per patch with a specific dimension like shown here. And the pretty much last component of the vision transformer is the actual transformer encoder. From this image, we can see which components need to be implemented, namely the multi-head attention block, the normalization, a feed-forward network and finally residual connections. On the left we can see that this block is repeated n times. Let's quickly go over each of these components. Multi-head attention is the scaled dot product attention mechanism of the transformer and allows to share information between the different inputs. As you can see on this image it has three inputs which are queries, keys and values. There is a PyTorch implementation of the multi-head attention block so no need to implement this from scratch. So this is the implementation of attention. As I said, we use multi-head attention from Torch and then we have a linear transformation for each of the keys, queries and values. And our input image simply, or our input patch goes through each of them. And then we apply attention and return the attention output. The normalization block in the transformer is layer normalization. Layer norm normalizes all inputs in a layer for each individual sample. There are several reasons why a layer norm and not the more popular batch norm is used, mainly because transformers are made for sequences. For the normalization, we use prenorm, which is a module that I found in one of the implementations. It simply takes some function, which can, for example, be attention, and then applies layer norm just before the function is applied. This is a quite useful block because you simply wrap your function in this normalization and then the normalization is applied before your function.
This one is straightforward, it's just a linear layer that takes the attention weighted vectors as inputs and transforms them for the next layer or output. So here we have the linear layer, actually we have two of them, and in between we have the Gaussian arrow linear unit, which is the activation function that is used, and we also have dropouts in between to avoid overfitting. Finally, residual or skip connections are used at different places in the transformer. These connections are mainly to improve the flow of information, for example to avoid vanishing gradients, which means that the training signal is lost during backpropagation. We can now simply plug all the components together to get the final version of the vision transformer. So here's just the residual block and this block works as follows. You specify a function and then this function is wrapped and you can add the inputs before and after the function and concatenate or actually add them here. Okay, so this is the full vision transformer module and as it says here, not all of the parameters are like in the original implementation. I've left out some dropouts and norms and also have only four layers, a smaller image size, a different patch size and stuff like that. And this is just to simplify my architecture a little bit because then the training will be faster. And here we can find the patch embedding we've defined before. So this patches and transforms the in input image into these patch vectors. And this is then used here in the forward function. So the input to that is an image. And then we have the position embedding, which is a learnable parameter, as well as the CLS token, which is this dummy token for the global representation, which is also learnable. And those are both added to the input. First of all, the CLS token is just an additional token. And we repeat it for as many batches as we have. So each batch gets one token and then the position embedding is added to each of the of the tokens within one batch image. And then the last component is that we pass through all of the transformer layers and here I make use of the blocks I've defined before. So the multi-head attention is wrapped in a normalization and then we have some res residuals around this and then we have the feed forward block which is also wrapped in normalization and again residuals and that's basically it. And if we have the architecture on the right now, you see that's exactly how one of the transformer blocks looks like. And finally we have the hat. So this takes the classification token, which is at position zero here and uses the classification token to perform predictions by passing it through another linear component, which we call hat here. And then we have the output, which is the output dimension, for example, the number of classes. I think it also makes sense to quickly outline some of the differences between vision transformers and the very popular CNNs, and especially when to use which architecture. CNNs have a strong inductive bias, namely translation invariance. This comes from sliding the learnable kernel over the image. Vision transformers, on the other hand, are like all transformer models, pretty flexible and have no strong bias. Because of the inductive bias, CNNs are also less data hungry, whereas vision transformers need to learn all of the underlying rules of the data. One of the commonly reported statements in the literature is that you should stick to CNNs if you have view data and use the vision transformer only if you have access to millions of images. Otherwise CNNs will most likely perform better. CNNs learn in a hierarchical way through a growing receptive field. Vision transformers always have access to all of the components of the image and therefore have a more global way of learning. There is a paper that compares these two models in case you are interested in further details. It's called Do Vision Transformers See Like Convolutional Neural Networks? and is linked below. Plus there is a blog post on this paper where I found this nice plot and I encourage you to check it out because there are many other interesting visualizations of this type. Finally, a nice property of vision transformers is that they come with baked in interpretability. It's possible to visualize the attention weights which results in a so-called attention map that highlights the input regions with the highest influence. 
In the last part of this video, I quickly want to talk about some of the extensions that have been developed for the Vision Transformer. First of all, there is the SWIN Transformer, where SWIN stands for Shifted Window. This architecture can also be found in the native PyTorch library. The key component of the SWIN Transformer is to produce a hierarchical representation. This is done by iteratively merging the patches as the network gets deeper. Another difference is that the attention mechanism is applied in windows, which is more efficient than the global attention. Here is where the shifted window gets relevance. By shifting the attention window, it's also possible to learn information between windows. This is visualized on the image below. There are some more details for this architecture and I've linked another blog post below. The data efficient image transformer is another popular variant. As mentioned before, the vision transformers are quite data hungry and this model is an attempt to make the architecture more efficient by using knowledge distillation. Knowledge distillation means that you use another model that teaches the learned concept to a student model. For this, DATE uses an additional distillation token as you can see on this image. It is quite similar to the class token, but the key difference is that the objective is to predict the label of a teacher model instead of the true label. This teacher model is typically a confnet because it teaches the inductive bias to the student. As a result, the prediction performance on smaller datasets becomes much better. If these variants were not enough yet, there is a great collection with many other models on GitHub, which is linked below as well. That's it for this quick introduction. I hope this video was packed with useful information and helped you in some way. I hope to see you next time. Have a wonderful day.